The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. For the next 30 seconds... I want to talk to listeners between the ages of 35 and 45, to men and women who occasionally find themselves thinking, Will I be alive in 1975? Well, the answer is that a good many million of you will be alive in 75. In that year, this country will have 20 million people over 65, and that's twice as many as we have today. So, as you plan your future... Remember that there is a mighty good chance that you will be alive in 75. And in exactly 15 minutes, we'll have a suggestion which will show you how life insurance with the Equitable Society can help you make the most of this long life that's ahead of you. Tonight's FBI file, The Fugitive Pirate. This is the year when man may finally use the secret of atomic power for peaceful purposes. When man's conquest of machines will surpass his every previous achievement in the field of invention. But while some men are delving into the scientific unknown, there are others who are still plying their same old selfish trade, benefiting no one but themselves. True, they have borrowed some of the equipment of America's technical progress for their activities. But basically, they have not changed. Their motives are as primitive as the jungle. These people are criminals. The night's file opens in a cottage located in a sparsely settled section of the Florida coast. It is night. In the living room of this modest dwelling, we find John Douglas and his wife, Lucy. John? Yes, dear? Sounds like the storm's letting up. Yep. Should blow over before morning. What are you doing? I'm working on some figures, and I'm not very happy about them either. What's wrong? Well, Lucy, what was the weather and all? I was only able to work ten days last month. According to my arithmetic, we only cleared enough to make the final payment on our boat. Jim, that's wonderful. Well, I don't think so at all. Why not? Well, you've been skimping and saving for a year so I could buy that boat. You needed it to make a living. Yes, I know, but I hope by now to be able to do something for you. Oh, John. I want to buy some clothes and things for the house. You will, John. I know you will. I can wait. Sure. Meantime. Oh, who's that? I'll see. Pretty late for company. Let me, well, let, let me in, will you? Uh, sure. Here, here. Better give you a hand. Thanks. Thanks. Just lean on me. Ah, uh, yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Oh, what's wrong with him, John? I don't know. We'll see. Who is he? Never seen him before. Uh, sit here, mister. Yeah, okay. He's wearing a life preserver. Yeah. What happened to you, mister? Uh, a boat sunk a couple miles out. Hit a reef. It's been... It's been tough get, getting in. Oh! Well, uh, Lucy, you go fix him something hot to drink. Oh, sure. I'll get these wet clothes off him right away. <laughs> That same evening at an FBI field office some 20 miles away, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at a typewriter just finishing a report. Jim, have you seen Mr. Barton? Oh, yes, Mark. He's down at police headquarters. I found a message at home for me to report here at once. This is my night off. It was. You've been assigned to work with me. Something big? Yes. 
Jewel robbed it, one of the large estates on Bayfront Drive. Have you been out there? Just came back. What's our angle? The two men who did the job posed as FBI agents. Oh. What are the details? Well, a family named Claremont was giving a big party tonight. Yeah? Two men dressed in dinner clothes presented fake credentials. They asked to see Mrs. Claremont alone. I see. She took them into the library. One of the men threatened her with a gun, forced her to hand over her jewels. She was then bound and gagged, and the men ran out. How much were the jewels worth? Over $50,000. When was the robbery discovered? About five minutes after the men left. But by that time, the thieves had made a clean getaway. They stole a car belonging to one of the guests. Any further word on them? Yes, the car was just found abandoned at a dock about three miles from the house. Who turned that up? Local police. Oh. They also found a witness who saw two men get out of the car and into a boat alongside of the dock. Stole a boat too, huh? No. No, the witnesses said they seemed to know their way around it. Evidently, it belonged to them. They drove off in it? Yes. Witness caught the name of the boat, however. It was the Sea Maid Second. I imagine you've already alerted the coastal authorities to be on the lookout. That's right. Have you got a description of the two men? Yes, I've already put it out on the teletype. Well, what do we do now? Just hope that we get a quick report on that boat. Morning. Oh, good morning. When did you get up? A couple minutes ago. Seen these clothes by the bed, so I put them on. That's what they were there for. How do you feel? Okay. Well enough for breakfast? Sure. How about some eggs? Uh, I just got them right fresh from the hen. Swell. Sit down. I'll, I'll have something for you in a minute. Can I watch? Oh, if you like. Where's the fellow that was here last night? My husband. Is that what he is? Yes. Kind of old for you, ain't he? He went to the store. He'll be right back. <laughs> I see. What do you folks do here? My husband has a boat. He dives for sponges. You mean he dives with one of them helmets and suits? Yes. Well, that's good to know. That you, John? Yes, okay. I'm I'm out here in the kitchen. Uh, uh, how about that stranger? Is he up? Oh. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Okay now. Uh, Lucy cooking up some breakfast, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that should put you right back on top. Sure. Yeah. Uh, guess you'll excuse me now. I gotta get down to my boat. Wait, I'll walk away with you. Have got time, man? Go ahead. You just holler for him, Lucy. All right. Go ahead. All right. Mister? Douglas is the name. John Douglas. Oh. Uh, Mr. Douglas, your wife tells me you're a diver. That's right. Got all your equipment there in the boat? Yep. Then I got a proposition for you. Just listen to this. Morning, Mark. Oh, hello, Jim. What did you do, stay here all night? No, I, I just came in about 20 minutes ago. Anything break? Yes, I was just on the phone with the sheriff up at San Marino. And? The body of a man was found washed up on the beach there early this morning. From his description, he sounds like one of the missing jewel thieves. Then something must have happened to the boat. Well, according to the sheriff, that's been pretty well established. How? Oh. Well, there'd been quite a bit of debris washed up on the beach from last night's storm. It included a life preserver and a number of cushions on which was stenciled the name Sea Maid Second. How did this man die? Drowning? Mm -hmm, that's right. What about his companion? Sheriff found no trace of him. How about the boat? Any idea where it sank? No, not so far. But the sheriff down there will get in touch with us if anything else breaks. How we doing, Mr. Douglas? Well, we should be getting near that reef. That is, if you remember the position right. Look, I told you, there was a boy no more than a hundred feet from where the boat sank. I heard the bell ring. Well, he'll soon be there, then. Okay. I think uh, I'll go below, see if your wife will rustle me a little food. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Hello. I'm 
I'm kind of hungry. There's some sandwiches. Help yourself. Okay. We'll be getting there soon. Ain't you excited? Why? Why? There's over $50,000 worth of jewels in that boat. The deal I made with your husband, half of that goes to him and you. I know. And you still ain't excited? No. Why not? Something wrong with this whole thing. I already told you I was working on a boat. There were jewels in that boat. The owner ran it on a reef and it sank. According to the laws of the sea, if we salvage the jewels, they belong to us. What happened to the owner? When we went down, I lost track. I still wish we'd never agreed to come. Okay, okay. Got anything to drink? There's some water in that jug. Oh. You know something? You know what's the matter with you? You just don't like nothing. <laughs> I guess that's what comes from hooking up with an old guy. You get mixed up, scared. That's not true. What you need, sweetheart, is a young guy. Now, look. Hey, hey, come up on deck. We're near the boy. <laughs> okay. See you later, honey. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Mr. Taylor, this is Sheriff Brewster down at San Marino. Hello, Sheriff. Something's turned up down here I thought you should know about. Oh, what's that? I got a report that a man swam ashore last night and went to the house of a resident down here named John Douglas. Well. Sounds like the man we're looking for. Yes. Have you contacted Douglas? No, I just got the report. He told the story to a neighbor of his. Hmm? He doesn't have a telephone, so I'm going to get out there. Sheriff, I think I'd better come down to San Marino. I'll get a car and leave here within ten minutes. What's the story on your husband? Huh? Has he talked to you? Yes, just a few seconds ago. What did he say? He, he's down about 40 feet walking along the reef. Oh, did he find anything? Shh. Yes, John. I've located the boat. Good. Did you find the boat? Yes. Fine. I'm on deck. Going down into the cabin now. Right. What's he saying? Tell me, will you? He's going down into the cabin. Good. He shouldn't have no trouble from now on. The jewels are in the bag right under one of the bunks. I hope he remembers that. He will. Want a cigarette? No, thanks. <laughs> you don't like me much, do you? No. Why? I don't trust you. No, that ain't the real reason. You're just scared to like me. Lucy? Yes, John? I found the jewels. I'm coming up. Very well. What you saying? He found the jewels. Hey. He's coming up. Swell. Start the winch. Okay. Will it take him long to come up? No. And they don't give us much time, does it? For what? For getting us straightened out. Look, I think we should settle something once and for all. What? Huh? You seem to have worked out an idea that because my husband is an older man and you're young, that makes you more attractive to me. Well, you're wrong. All wrong. I love my husband very much. <laughs> no kid. Give him a hand. Help him over the side. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll take that bag. Let me help you with that helmet, John. Yeah, let's see if it's all here. Yeah, yeah, real pretty. There you are, John. Ah, thanks. Nice work, mister. Oh, it wasn't hard. You better head right in. It's getting dark. Wait a minute. Huh? Sorry, but... Uh... We ain't going back to your place. We ain't? What do you mean? You just get on that wheel and go where I tell you. Now, just a minute. You heard me? John, he has a gun. Your gun. That's right. I found it in your cabin. Now, kindly do like I say. Mm -hmm. 
We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI helps provide security for your country. Now, let's talk briefly about security for those who want to be independent as they grow older. Wonderful idea, Mr. Cross, but what am I going to use for money? With taxes and living costs the way they are, how are we going to save for independence 20 years from now? Well, right now in the Equitable Society, we have thousands of members who earn considerably less than you, but they're looking forward to complete independence in their 60s through an Equitable Life Assurance Society Independent 60s Plan. I'm open-minded. How does this Independent 60s Plan work? The Independent 60s Plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society has these three features. First, it costs considerably less than you probably think, especially if you're covered by Social Security. Second, you can create your retirement estate for the full amount the moment you sign the contract. You don't spend years wondering whether or not you're going to accumulate enough money to be independent in your 60s. You're sure of it because it's guaranteed by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Third, this equitable plan gives you a definite goal and provides you with a practical method of reaching that goal. Yes, there's nothing finer than being independent in your 60s, being your own boss, doing the things you want to do. Mr. Cross, this is beginning to sound pretty good to me. Well, then I suggest you get in touch with an Equitable Life Assurance Society representative. He'll give you the facts on the Independent 60s plan and let you make up your own mind. Look in your phone book for the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Fugitive Pirate. The shocking lack of decency exhibited by the criminal in tonight's case in the files of your FBI should not be as shocking as it is. For it should be understood that in order to be a criminal, you must develop a new sense of morals, a different set of rules by which you live your life. No longer are you interested in doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. No longer do you care about the poverty and hunger that attack other people. For in the mind of the criminal, there are no other people worth thinking about. The criminal lives for himself. And in his depraved mind, there are no values beyond those that serve his petty personal needs. That is why you must do whatever you possibly can to end the wave of crime. For only one set of morals can survive, yours or his. Our FBI file continues aboard John Douglas's boat. It is night. Douglas and his wife are standing by the wheel. The jewel seat is seated behind them, giving orders. Just keep heading due south. I'll let you know when to turn in to shore. Look, uh... John, he has the gun. You've got to do as he says. Oh, very well. This is pretty dangerous, though, running on this darker night with no lights. If we ain't got lights, nobody sees us. That's how I want it. You didn't tell us the truth before, did you? About what? That sunken boat and the jewels. <laughs> no, I didn't. I knew it. What's the real story? Well, I guess there's no harm in telling you. My brother and I stuck up a party the other night. Made a getaway in that boat, hit the reef, and sunk. Where is your brother? I don't know. When the boat went down, we both did the best we could, but I'm sure he made it. Bill's tough. He's real tough. Mm. Police must be looking for you for that robbery, huh? Sure. But they ain't looking for you. You're the best protection I got. That's why we're sticking together till I'm in the clear. <laughs> Hello. I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, hello there, Jim. I've been waiting for you. Sit down. Oh, thanks. I've got quite a bit to report. Oh? Been out to see this man, Douglas? Yes, but I arrived too late. 
What do you mean? Well, a neighbor told me that Douglas, his wife, and the man we're looking for, had all put out to sea in Douglas's boat early this morning. And haven't returned yet? No. I think I got the motive for their going, too. Oh, what's it? Well, Douglas is a professional diver, and he has full equipment. I see. Now, if the jewel thief's boat did sink, which certainly seems logical... The thief enlisted the diver's aid to recover the jewels. You're right. Oh, did you get a description of Douglas's boat? Yes, I've already sent out an alarm on it. Good. Oh, is anyone out at Douglas's house waiting for the boat's return? Yes, I left two deputies out there. Oh, uh, by the way... Yes? I found these pants in his cabin. Huh? They obviously belong to the thief. Let me ask you them, please. Sure, yeah. Tuxedo pants. There's a label in the waistband. Oh, yes. French and Company. They rent tuxedos. Yes, I know. Their shop is just around the corner from our office. Well, I've called them already. The store didn't answer, but I've got French's home phone number. And? Well, he was out to a movie. Wasn't expected home until midnight. Midnight, huh? Let's see. It's 10.15 now. Mm Mm-hmm. Sheriff, this could be a valuable lead. We might find out from Mr. French who the two thieves were. I think I'll drive back to town. All right, you can swing due west. Head for that light. That's Midway Lighthouse. That's right. Right at the mouth of South River. That's where we're heading. Up South River? Mm-hmm. We can't do that. Why not? The river's dangerous enough in the daytime. I'm not running up it with an old lights at night. You just do like you're told. Look, this boat's all we have. We don't want to lose it. I'll guide you up the river. This is home base for me. I know it like a book. How far up you aim to go? About 20 miles. 20? That far up is nothing but swamp. We stopped just before we hit the swamp. River City. That's my home. Why can't you get off at the mouth of the river? Because it's safer this way. I made a deal with my brother that if we got separated, we'd meet at home. I want to keep that deal. I'm not running up there without lights. Oh, yes, you are. My boat means too much to stay me. Stay at that wheel. No, I ain't going to stay at the... Oh! If you didn't have that gun... Yeah, but I do have it. Now get back to the wheel. <laughs> Oh, Jim. Yes, Mark? Are these all the clothes that the two men left here at the store when they rented the tuxedos? Yes. Let's start going over them, huh? Right. You take that suit, I'll take this one. Okay. What about hats? They didn't wear any. Didn't wear any neckties, either. Hmm. Well, these suits are pretty well worn. Oh. Well, there's nothing in the jacket pockets. No, nothing in this one, either. Oh, here's the label. It was bought at Rand Brothers here in town. Yes, so was this one. That doesn't give us much, though. Both suits must be, oh, four or five years old. Yeah. And Rand Brothers do too big a business to remember any individual customers. Any dry cleaning marks in yours? No, I don't see any. Well, let's look at the trousers. Okay. Well, Mr. French gave me a pretty good description of the men. Had he ever seen them before? No, but he said they looked enough alike to be brothers. Mm. Nothing in these pants pockets. No dry cleaning marks. I'm drawing a blank here, too. Well, there's the underwear and socks. Uh, look for laundry marks. Right. Now, Mr. French did say one thing that might be important. What's that? Both men looked and talked as if they came from back in the swamp country. I see. Ah, these things must have been home laundered. There's no laundry marks. No, I haven't got any either. Well, let's take a look at the shoe. Okay. Here you are. Thanks. Mm-hmm. This pair was bought at a shoe store in River City. Who are these? Uh, hey, wait a minute. What? That pair you have, are they mates? Yeah. Are both soles worn? Yes, why? Here, take a look at these. The sole on one of them is practically new. Say, that's strange. Yes. None of the witnesses said anything about either man being crippled or that they'd live. I know. Mark, I've got a hunch. Let's get to a phone. Head over there for the left bank. It's safe to go that close to shore? Look, I took you all the way up the river okay, didn't I? Mm. See that little dock? Yes. Pull alongside. This where you live? Yeah. Oh, thank heaven. Oh. Huh. Don't see no lights on in the house. Maybe I beat Bill back here. 
Wrong side. Uh-huh. Well, get off. Uh-uh. Not yet. Why? I got something to tend to here first. We've done as you asked. We brought you home. Now get off and leave us alone. Uh-uh. It ain't gonna be that easy. What do you mean? You both know too much. All we know is that we want to get away from here. Sorry, but I gotta make sure you keep quiet. What are you talking about? I gotta kill you. Put down that gun. Oh. There you are, Phillips. Who are you? Call the alarm, Mr. Douglas. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh. Come on, Phillips. Come on, get on your feet. Oh. I don't know what brought you here, Mr. but I'm sure glad you come. Phillips himself was responsible for that. What do you mean? You left your clothes behind at that rental shop, Phillips. And when I examined your shoes, I saw that they'd been bought in River City. And the sole of one of them was practically new. So what? That meant that either you or your brother had trouble with one leg. So I contacted the doctors here in River City and gave them your description. One of the doctors remembered treating you for a broken ankle. He gave me your address. All right, Phillips. You're coming along with me. Chuck Phillips was sentenced by a federal court to serve five years for impersonating a federal agent. At the conclusion of this term, he will then serve a 25-year sentence imposed by local authorities for robbery and assault. The two Phillips brothers thought they had committed the perfect crime, and for a while it must have seemed to Chuck as if they had. But no crime is perfect. For somewhere in the devious machinations which produce crime, there is a clue left on some unsuspected point. Many times it is not an apparent clue. But while it is true that crime as a business has not progressed in 50 years, it is equally true that in the field of scientific investigation of crime, there has been great progress. In tonight's case, for instance, the very manner in which a shoe had been worn was the undoing of a criminal who had planned very carefully. But that small clue was turned into the criminal's capture by superior knowledge of a special agent. Superior knowledge he had received as part of his training as a member of your FBI. just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. A little while ago, I gave you a few brief facts about the independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. To get full information, you'll want to ask your Equitable Society representative questions like these. Exactly how much will the plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How will it dovetail with my Social Security? He's got the answer to that, too. What income will it give me in my 60s? Your Equitable Society representative will give you the exact figure. Ask him to drop around for a friendly visit. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Vicious Shakedown. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Vicious Shakedown, on This Is Your FBI.
This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.